My name is Ed Boyden, and I direct the Synthetic, Neuro Synthetic Neurobiology Group and co-direct the MIT Center for Neurobiological Engineering. Well, I've always been sort of a philosopher at heart. You know, I've been wondering since a young age about, you know, why are we here? What should we be doing? And uh, so I studied physics and mathematics and chemistry, and it felt like, you know, in terms of spending a career on something, the weak link in understanding ourselves is really about how our brains generate our minds and how our minds understand the world. So it's hard to overstate how complicated the brain is. You know, within a cubic millimeter of your brain, you're going to have 100,000 neurons that are connected by a billion connections. And each of those neurons is, is computing using millisecond timescale electrical pulses. And each of those connections is communicating with millisecond timescale chemical communication. And so what that means is within a cubic millimeter of the brain, you're having you know, on the order of some fraction of a trillion operations per second. And so if we want to understand the brain, we have to be able to really make a list of the cell types of the brain, you know, a parts list. We need to know how they're connected. We need to know how they communicate and compute. And then ideally, to be able to follow information as it goes from sensation all the way to action with decisions and emotions and memories all being integrated in between. So one thing we want is a parts list of the brain. And to do that, ideally we would know the shape of the cells of the brain. We would know what molecules are in that cell. And we would know what electrical processes are, are happening within the cell. And all three kinds of information can be done if you bring a glass microneedle up to the cell, open a little hole, almost like doing surgery on single cells, and then if you can do that, you can record those electrical pulses, you can inject a glowing dye so you can see the shape, and you can also extract the content so you can find the recipe of what makes that cell do what it does. And so there actually is a technology from the 1970s that does this called patch clamping, but it's been very difficult to do, especially in the awake behaving brain. And so what we did, in a collaboration with the Forest Lab at Georgia Tech, was to develop a robot that can do this in a completely automatic fashion. And of course, all the cells in the body have more or less the same genome, but they, they look different and they do different things because different parts of the genome are on or off. And we can actually extract the contents of cells in order to see what uh, parts of the genome are on or off, what the recipe of the cell is. One other application of autopatching that's really useful is that um, you know, there are a lot of drugs that are important therapeutically for brain disorders. And one of our core motivations is to figure out how to develop principle-driven therapeutics, drugs that might not just bathe the brain in some kind of substance and cause you know, a discoordinated set of changes that we hope for the best, but rather can really dial in information to fix brain disorders in a very targeted and side-effect-free way. And so one thing we're doing is using the Autopatch robot to go in and record how pharmacological agents influence different cell types in the brain. And a lot of the work that's been done has been done in vitro, in a dish, but in vivo, of course, during you know, the waking state and during behavior, these cells act very differently than when they're just in a dish. And so if we want to know how a drug is influencing neural dynamics, we ideally would examine how it impacts neural information in a relevant state, like in an awake behaving state. We put all the plans on the internet so people can build their own. And we also spun out a company that makes kits that people can attach to their rigs. Uh, but one thing that we're working very hard on is scaling it up. Can we make it not just one cell at a time, but able to record dozens and maybe even someday hundreds of cells at once? Then you can really see not just the computations within one cell, but to look at how different neurons that are connected in a network are talking to each other. And so, you know, we know a, a lot about connections between cells in the brain, but almost no experiments have been done where you record two cells that are connected and to figure out how the electrical computations in one influence the other in an awake behaving brain. And so that's one of our goals is to build a massively parallel robot with many individual robotic arms that can do surgery on many cells at the same time and sort of see how, how information is really flowing with millisecond precision and millivolt precision.